I think legumes, it's important to get into because that's a feature of all these different diets. I think that, you know, people are looking to do Mediterranean and vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, like legumes are going to need to be a feature of, of that, of that diet, right. In order to kind of be as healthy as possible inside the diet, inside that diet. Yeah. And to get enough protein. And I I think that within the plant-based community, there are certainly quite a few people who kind of downplay the importance of protein. Yeah. I don't think that's a good idea. Right. (laughs) I I think that protein is really important. And that I think the discussion around protein and long-term health for me is more about the source, not the amount. I think Mm. this, we have to have more of an emphasis on plant protein. But I also think we need to get enough and it is important yeah. for a number of different functions in the body, but particularly important for maintaining muscle mass and yeah. strength as we age, uh, both of which are predictors of longevity. How do you, what are the best plant proteins? Like, What do you kind of recommend? Tofu, tempeh, mm-hmm. all those other legumes that I just mentioned. Mm-hmm. There's also seitan if people are not celiac or gluten sensitive. Um, TVP is another product that's not ultra processed and is very high in protein per calorie. Um, So all of those are are options. I think if you're an athlete, then adding in some type of protein powder can be convenient. I think athletes... Is that the only way to get that full chain of amino acids? Like how do you actually... uh, Yeah, that's a great question. Um, Just to finish that, I think athletes, all athletes, not all, but most athletes use some type of protein powder Mm -hmm. from a convenience point of view um if they're trying to get to an optimal level and that could be a whey protein or a plant protein kind of shake the protein quality question is a good one um proteins made up of amino acids Mm -hmm. some of which are non-essential some are essential so nine of them are essential which means that our body's not making them Mm -hmm. we require them through nutrition and often i think people uh have have been led to believe that plants are missing Mm -hmm. some of these essential amino acids. That's not quite correct. Um, So maybe we can define that a little bit more. All plants contain all of the nine essential amino acids. And I know when I was at university, they actually didn't teach us that. They taught us that quinoa and soy were complete proteins that contain all nine essential amino acids and other foods were missing them. Mm. That's not, that's not correct. What is correct is that the definition of complete and incomplete proteins needs to be understood here. It's not saying that if it's complete, it contains all nine, and if it's incomplete, it's it's missing those nine. What it's saying is an incomplete protein is a protein that if you ate that food for all of your calories, at the end of the day, you would fall short on your requirements for one or more of those amino acids. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, but it's really only interesting to people in developing countries that have no access to food. Right. Right? That's where that becomes really important if someone's getting all their nutrition from one grain. Mm-hmm. But uh, when you're eating with some, you know, just a modest amount of diversity, providing you're eating enough calories and total protein, that takes care of itself. Mm-hmm. And you can see that in an app like Chronometer, which is a free app, mm-hmm. plug your food in. Whichever one of these variations of diets that you choose over a day, I think this is good for people to do anyway for a little bit. I'm not saying that everyone needs to track their food and calories long term, but it can be helpful to see what are you eating? You know, how much saturated fats in there, unsaturated fat? Are you getting all of these essential amino acids? Are you falling short on any micronutrients? That app will display that in a in a nice, uh, very visual way. So I get people not to focus so much on, you know, combining foods. I don't think Mm -hmm. people don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. What I do like them to focus on is just knowing they're eating enough protein. Right. Because when you're eating enough protein, enough calories, all those amino acids take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. So if you're not an athlete and you're someone who's just, you know, uh, recreationally working out, then 1.2 to 1.3 grams per kilogram, I'd say, is the lower amount where I'd want someone to land. There are people that argue that you only need 0.8 grams per kilo, which is the RDA. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, not, I'm not on that team. <laughs> yeah. I think that you're more likely to run into problems there in terms of recovery, ability to uh, build muscle, stay strong. And there was a recent study just out that makes me believe that even more. Mm-hmm. And then 
if you're an athlete and you're really optimizing and you work training hard, you've got a lot of volume resistance training, then you want to be at at least 1.5, 1.6 grams per kilogram. Mm -hmm. And that's going to help you recover. That's going to help you get the adaptations that you want. The, The exercise is the stimulus that provides the stress. And then for the body to adapt, it needs that, the nutrition to come with it. Um, but even at that 1.2 to 1.3 grams per kilo, when you look at uh, studies that have looked at varying protein intakes and strength mm-hmm. with resistance training, you get most of the benefit in strength at by 1.2, 1.3 grams. Yeah. You squeeze out a little bit more as you get up to 1.5, 1.6, mm-hmm. but it's, it's not a huge amount. Right. Yeah. I wonder, like for folks who are not eating animal proteins, which in some ways is just easier to get protein, right? For the most part, maybe that's not true. And I'd love for you. Well, to- I think it's I think it's easier um, for the average person who hasn't spent any time thinking about plant protein and where protein is found. Right. Right. And so people are just kind of doing what they know, but with a, with a very small amount of time invested. I mean, I reeled off those foods. Honestly, if you just put them side by side into a chart, you'll see how protein rich they can be. Yeah. And if you were to go and do two or three days of eating and mm-hmm. including those foods in your meals, you'll see it adds up. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can kind of understand on face value why it may seem easier, but you can definitely get enough protein from eating only plants. I mean, I yeah. only personally only eat plants and I had my DEXA scan today and my fat-free mass is in you know, top 5%, 10%. Wow. So it's possible. certainly possible. And I'm not sitting around. I can't remember the last time I have ever counted protein. I'm not sitting around yeah. fussing about that. I just know what foods contain protein. Right. And I make a concerted effort to feature them and emphasize them in, in my meals. So mm-hmm. step one is just actually knowing where you find protein in plant foods. Are plant foods, are they more calorically dense? than like an animal protein not necessarily often they're actually less calorically dense Mm. which surprises people you know some foods like salmon are quite calorie dense yeah foods yeah even though you know we see them as healthy and i would argue they are healthy Mm. i think that fatty fish like that is the the research shows positive health outcomes um but tofu is not more calorie dense than salmon and you know tvp or seitan like seitan which I, i mentioned before which people can, can consume if they're not celiac or gluten sensitive is like 80, 90% protein. Mm-hmm. Wow. So it's absolutely possible to get enough protein without consuming extra calories. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that is something that people think. And there's, there is the idea out there that, oh, you'd have to eat more calories. That's not the yeah. case. I can make someone a meal plan with 2000 calories that has 160, 170 grams of protein. And, and part of the art in that is manipulating some of the other kind of food groups, yeah. you know, changing things around in terms of uh, nuts and seeds and yeah. whole grains. 